Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. Uh, I hope the um, audio is good on the conference call and uh, I hope everything is coming around well on Facebook. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and pray over this this morning and pray over ourselves as we get ready to study God's word. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all your blessings. You're so worthy of all the praise, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we thank you for allowing us to see another one of your beautiful days. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And as always, Lord, we give you the praise. We ask you, little Heavenly Father, as we get ready to study your word, that you bless this technology that we're on, Lord. We ask you to bless the conference call, Lord, and all the technology that goes behind it. We ask you to bless Facebook and all the technology that goes behind it, that we might transmit this message throughout the world, dear Lord, and that it may be recorded and shared, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for this right now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of all of this. Lord, we plead the blood of every household that's listening to this message today and tuned in with us. We pray over each life, dear Heavenly Father, right now and plead your blood over their lives. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, for help, for strength. We ask you for for spiritual, financial blessings, material blessings, all the blessings that you have promised us in your word. We stand on your promises, God, and we thank you right now for your wonderful and marvelous promises in our lives. Keep us, Lord, this day as you've never kept us before. Bless us this day, Lord, like never before. And Lord, while you're doing that, we'll give you the praise. We'll give you all the praise all the glory and all of the honor. We thank you now, Lord. Anoint afresh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Isaiah, the sixth chapter. This is Isaiah's calling. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, um, verses one through one through eight. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses one through eight. And uh, I'm going to read it out of a um, New King James Version of the Bible. It says, in the year that uh, King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphims. Each one had six wings. With two wings, he covered his face. With two wings, he covered his feet. And with two wings, he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole world is full of his glory. And the post of the doors were shaken by the voice of him who, cared, who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, woe is me, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphims flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the, thong, with the tongs uh, from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? Who will go for us? Then I said, here am I. Send me. Oh, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. This, this is the calling of Isaiah. And this calling that Isaiah received is probably one of the most awesome uh, descriptions of, uh, of, of a calling that, that, that we, we, we see in the Bible. It ranks up there with Moses and, and uh, uh, the burning bush. It, 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 it's, it's up there with, with uh, 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 Paul on the Damascus Road. It is an awesome calling, an awesome experience. Of, of, of being in the presence of God and God calling uh, uh, Isaiah into the ministry. So we're going to look at this this calling today. We're going to dig into it and 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 look at this 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 whole experience that that Isaiah experienced with God. Our key verse for today comes from this uh, sixth, I mean the eighth verse. And it says, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Our key concept for today is just like Isaiah had to be forgiven from, from his sins to do God's plan in order for God to do good things in our lives, we have to be forgiven of our sins. Hallelujah. The keys for kids for this lesson is God has special plans for each of us. Secondly, God wants all of us to be able to do great things. And thirdly, we can do awesome things through God. We cannot, excuse me, do awesome things through God without being forgiven of our sins. And so that, that's the keys for kids. And then the learning facts that we're going to deal with is we're going to uh, look at this, this circumstance surrounding Isaiah's call. And then the biblical principles we want to gain out of this lesson is to explain Isaiah's initial reaction to what he saw and heard at his calling. And then our daily application, what we should walk away with is to live a life pleasing to our God. Oh, hallelujah. So let, let's, let's look at this lesson. I, um, the, the commentary, I, I like this three points that they brought out. They did it from the vision. Uh, so holy, and that's Isaiah uh, one, uh, 6, 1 through 3. And then so unworthy, verses 4 and 5. And so fitting, verses 6 through 8. But when I, when I look at this lesson, the first thing I see is, is that Isaiah has a crisis in his life. Uh, so this vision comes in when Isaiah has a crisis in his life. And, and, I, and I love that because when we have crisis in our lives, when loved ones die, when people get sick, when we're sick, when we're having financial difficulties or health difficulties, when we have difficulties in our lives, a uh, uh, crisis, if you will, that that's when God shows up and God shows up and he shows out. Hallelujah. And, and, and so that that's that's what we're going to look at today uh, in, in our first part of this vision that Isaiah had. So verse one says this in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Here it was. Isaiah was in a situation. He, uh, Ike, 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 Ike was in a bad situation. His, his king had died. He had been preaching for, for five chapters. He had been preaching for five chapters in, in the book of Isaiah. And, and, and he was trying to tell his people. That, 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 that they were not doing what God wanted them to do. Uh, Judah and Israel during this time were, uh, uh, that Isaiah served as prophet, uh, weren't, they were not depending upon God. They were being disobedient, uh, living lives that did not please God. They, they were worshiping idols and, 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 
and and depending on the power and ability of sorcerers and 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 uh, musicians and uh, all of that. And, and they had forgot about all that God had done for their ancestors, how God had blessed them and, and the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had fallen upon them. But yet they, they were, 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 were in disobedience and, 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 and they didn't even care about what God was doing in their lives. And so God had called this calling Isaiah to be the one to speak words to to the children of Israel and and uh the, and, and at this time the two countries uh Judah and Israel and then the king died have mercy this king was not a good king and it is believed that Isaiah uh was his counselor and some have said Isaiah was even his cousin they were kin people and he was trying to counsel him, but he died of, of leprosy and, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and his ministry and, and his kingdom was lost because of his own disobedience. And so this was a crisis in Isaiah's life for his king to die, his earthly king. So he decided he was going to go to the temple. Going to the temple probably to pray and to do his priestly duties. And as he was in the temple, he saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. He saw the Lord. That, that's a wonderful thing, that we see the Lord. When we go into church, that we experience the Lord in the middle of our crisis, that 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 we make a connection with God, and, and and he made a connection with God. Not not that he initiated Isaiah initiated the connection, but God initiated the connection. God showed up, and and and, and he was sitting upon a throne. And that is to say God was sitting in a place where God ought to be sitting on a throne. He's king of kings and lord of lords. Isaiah had lost his earthly king, but he still had a heavenly king. Many of us, we lose our leaders, our, our leaders in our family, our matriarchs, our patriarchs. We lose our pastors. We lose our friends and all of it. But, but God is still there. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And he'll show up sitting on his throne, high and lifted up. But not only was he high and lifted up, it says his train. That's his robe. His royal robe had a long train, like a train on a wedding gown. And that train filled the temple. So that is to say that even though God is sitting up high, even though God is sitting on his throne, he he, he comes down low. And, 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 and when we're in situations, he, if he has to reach way down, he'll reach way down to pick us up, to help us out, to see us through. And that was the vision that Isaiah saw. But the vision does not stop there. In verse 2, in the middle of this crisis, it says, above stood the sheriffs. Each one had six wings. With, 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 with two wings, they covered their face. And with two wings, they covered their feet. And with two wings, they flew. Seraphins are, 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 are angelic creatures that, that serve the Lord. Angelic creatures that, 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 that resembles the, the, the uh, four living creatures over in Revelation chapter 4, verse 6. They, they're, 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 Heavenly bodies, angels of that that serve the Lord. And these angels, these seraphims had six wings. 
six wings. And it says that they used two to cover their face in the presence of God. They used two to cover their feet in the presence of God. And then they used two to fly. Why, why, why did they cover their face? Why did they cover their feet? They, they, they recognized that they were in the holy presence of God. And in, in his presence, they had to give him reverence and they had to give him praise. Oh, hallelujah. And notice that their, their, their praise with the covering their face and their covering their feet. Were, 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 was just as important and if not more important than them flying and working for the Lord. In other words, let me say it a different way so I make sure I'm clear. When we work and serve the Lord, it is important that we worship and praise him while we do it. Praise and worship ought to have priority in our lives in serving an awesome God. Hallelujah. And then in verse 3, as these seraphims flew around the throne of God, it says, one cried to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Oh, hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. They were giving God praise. They were giving him awesome praise saying, holy, holy, holy. This, 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 this utterance of, 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 of these sheriffs again, Go back to John in 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 in, in, in Revelation. The, the 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 four living creatures did the same thing. They they cried, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty." This is the try uh, try. I, I can't say this word too well. Try try Hugin uh, 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 call. This this is this this is. It, 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 it's sort of like the Trinity. They, they were saying holy to God, the Father, holy to God, the Son, holy to God, the Holy Spirit. But it, but it emphasizes the character of God. God's character is holy, holy, holy. Well, what does holy mean? Holy means set apart. Holy means special. Holy means separated and, and, and sacred. And God is, is, is just not holy. He wants us to be holy. But not only is he holy, he's holy, holy, holy. He's set apart, threefold set apart. Oh, hallelujah. And he wants us to be holy. And all who worship him to be holy. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your holiness. Thank you, Lord, for your awesomeness. And they said, the, the, he is the Lord of hosts, and the whole world is full of his glory. Oh, hallelujah. The glory of God fills the world. The glory of God fills the earth. The glory of God, his splendor, his Shekinah glory. Oh, hallelujah. We ought to exalt him and give him glory, give him honor and give him praise. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. So that, that, that was his vision. In the middle of his crisis, he made a connection with God and God and the angels showed up. And, and they were worshiping. The angels were worshiping God. And they were crying out as they covered their feet and covered their face and flew around the throne. Now, we look at how he sees himself so unworthy. Isaiah got clarity, but now 
He's getting ready to get a cleansing. Listen to verses 4 and 5. And the post of the doors moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. In the presence of God, there is joy. In the presence of God, there is peace. In the presence of God, there is awesome holiness. But one of the things I, I, I learned that that, that, that when the closer we get to God, it seems like the further we are from being like him. And that comes into play because of God's wrath and God's judgment is always there. But at the same time, his grace and his mercy is there. But when we come into his presence, We'll be like Isaiah and say, woe is me. I'm undone. Oh, I mean, it's, it's like, oh, God. Oh, Lord, I, 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 I don't know what to do. I'm not like you. I'm, I, I, I just, it's your awesomeness, your marvelousness, your, your oh, oh, God. And God's presence was so powerful that, 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 the, the post in the temple shook and, and the whole house was filled with smoke and, and, and he described it as smoke but, but I think of it like a cloud a whole cloud just filled the temple and when Isaiah saw this when he experienced this he, he says woe is me woe is me I'm undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. When we're in the presence of God, we ought to confess our sins, our shortcomings. And we ought to trust how how, how uh, John says it in the New Testament, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. This is, this is Isaiah being cleansed by God because he's confessing, he's confessing his sins and his shortcomings. And not only because he's a priest, he's not only confessing his, but he's also confessing those of the people. I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm a man of unclean lips. And I'm in the midst of a people of unclean lips. But not only does he confess his sin, he also confesses who God is. He says, my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the heavenly angels. Oh, hallelujah. That, that, that reminds me of, of the confession of our mouth. And, and, and of our heart when, when we give our lives to Christ. When we say, Lord, I, I confess, as Romans 10, 9 says, that, 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 that Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I, I confess that he died on the cross for my sins and God raised him from the dead. Oh, hallelujah. 
We can walk around confessing our sins all day long and feeling guilt and feeling shame. But until we recognize the one who can cleanse us, who can purge us, who can take care of our sins, because we can't do it ourselves. All we can ever do is whitewash our sins like we whitewash an offense, an old picket fence. You can cover up your sins, but you cannot completely purge and cleanse your sin. That is God's job. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God, for being able to cleanse us. Thank you, God, for being able to forgive us. Thank you for Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. Glory. Hallelujah. He says, when he says, woe is me, he, he says, I'm undone. And I always like that word undone. Uh, some would say, you know, he's saying it's over. I'm doomed. But, but and, and that's okay. But he's saying I'm undone. Ain't nothing worse in the world to have a cake that you've cooked and you took it out the oven before it was finished baking. And it's all undone, all gummy and mushy in the middle. And that's how Isaiah was feeling, like an undone cake. And you know, and that's just like, ugh, it was just nasty. That's how he was feeling. But then God did something so fitting. He started the cleansing process. And that's verse 6. He says, Then flew one of the sheriffs unto me, having a live coal in his hands, which he had taken with the, uh, with the tongues from the altar. This angel was doing the work of God. And it says, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquities are taken away, thy sins purged. Yes, the angel touched his lips with the live cold, and the cold removed all of the guilt, all of the shame, and Isaiah's sins were forgiven. Isaiah confessed what his greatest sin was. It was his unclean lips. And God went right there and cleansed him right where he sinned. Oh, I don't know about you, but that just, that just like, oh, God, thank you. Thank you for your forgiveness. Oh, your blood, the blood of Jesus, how he washed away all of our sins and purged all of our iniquities. That's, 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 that's what this coal, it, it was like fire and it burned away. Because God is a, is a purifying fire and he'll burn away all our sin and all of our guilt and all of our shame. He laid that on his lips and he was purged of his sins. So when we as Christians accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we get down on our knees on a daily basis, hourly basis, minute by minute, moment by moment, and confess our sins. God cleanse us. That's his amazing grace. Oh, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy that cleanse us. Your mercy, we don't deserve it, but you, but you give us your righteousness and you cleanse us. So after he went through this cleansing, 
this cleansing was like a cooking. It, he was no longer undone. He was cooked to the right time. Oh, that's how it is. God, God is, it, 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 it's like putting us through, through a purification process of like going through the fire like they purify gold. And, and when they heat up gold, it runs off all of the dross. It goes to the top and they scrape that off. And then the gold becomes pure. We become like pure gold. Oh, thank you, Lord. And now that Isaiah was cleansed, he could now hear the calling. He could hear the calling of God. He could hear the word of God. He could hear God talking to him. Many times our minds are so cluttered with guilt, shame, and unforgiveness. That we can't hear God. Our minds are so cluttered with stuff of the world that we cannot hear God. And we have to call on God to quiet our minds, quiet our spirits that we can hear God and hear what he's saying. And so in verse 8, it says, I heard the voice of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Saying, who shall I send? Who will go for us? Some say this is a rhetorical uh, 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 question. Some say that this is a general question. E either way, whether it's rhetorical, whether it's general, Isaiah heard it. Have you heard yours? Have, have you uh, got into the frequency of God? Have you tuned in to the voice of God? To hear when he's calling, to hear when he's calling you to do what he's designed and designated for you to do. Isaiah heard it. And that's when he said, here am I. Send me. Here am I, God. I'll go for you. Here am I, God. I'm, I'm the one that you're calling. I, I'll go for you. I'll, I'll come out and I'll do what you call me to do. God is calling us. And, 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 and understand, Isaiah was already a priest. But God was now calling him to be a prophet. To be the one that that, that goes in front of the people and tell the people things that they may not even want to hear. But God's word must be proclaimed and it must go out. Oh, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. There's some things I want you to ponder as we get ready to close this lesson. Number one, a great king may have left his throne on earth. But the greatest king is still sitting on the throne of heaven. Thank God it's Jesus the Christ. And what we ought to catch is all glory belongs to God. We ought to worship him in spirit and in truth. And when we there, we must acknowledge our sins and, and allow God to cleanse us. Only God can cleanse us of all of our sins and righteousness. And when we're cleansed, when we, when, when, when we allow God to cleanse us, be ready. Be ready to hear his calling. I love this song. Many of us sing it. Um, holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. God in three persons, O oh, blessed Trinity. We ought to claim his holiness. And just like Isaiah had this encounter with God, and this great vision is given to us in Scripture, God wants to use us as his spokesman, 
to this sinful world. He wants us. He needs us to be part of the change agent. To tell sinner boys and girls, men and women, there is a savior. There is a Christ. There is forgiveness of your sin. All you have to do is believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the hills. Go tell it everywhere. Let your little light shine. Hallelujah. Let us pray to close out this lesson in the prayer of salvation. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Facebook, be blessed. If you want to call on the conference call to enter in on the discussion of this lesson, please call 910-218-0531. Again, 910-218-0531. Facebook, we'll see you next week. Our lesson next week will be in Jeremiah, the first chapter, and we're going to look at Jeremiah's calling. Hallelujah. Be blessed on Facebook. Conference call. I'll be right there in a second.